My dear chess friends, this is Fidel Master Victor Nostroyev, and we start our first lecture of the course where I'm going to teach you to find and to create tactical capabilities. This is what this course is about. So we start our first section and I'm sure that you understand that when you are looking for tactics, when you are trying to create tactical capabilities in your position in order to play tactically and do your best, you may start the attack on the enemy king. Well, of course, you cannot start the attack immediately with no preconditions. There should be some preconditions. For example, the position should be closed or at least the center should be stable. You may uh, have uh, the material advantage on the side where the enemy king is located. Or if you are castled to the opposite side, it makes sense for you to initiate a pawn march to exchange the pawns from the enemy king's pawn cover. So, but basically, if only you see that you have a chance to initiate the attack on the enemy king, it will likely lead to tactical play and this is one of the ways of how you should create tactical capabilities. First, to illustrate it, we start with the game that Magnus Carlsen played with white pieces against Jose Fernanda Cuenca Jimenez, who was black. And this game is probably the best example to illustrate how, uh, how uh, a positional play may be switched to a tactical play if only you have the attack on the enemy king. So here Magnus started with d4, he was white. Knight f6 was reacted by black and bishop g5. Well, looks like a very, uh, very strange move. Uh, well, it's uh, something from Trompovsky and after d5 it finally uh, transposes to Trompovsky variation. And then Magnus plays a very common to London system strategy, but with the bishop already on g5. So he continues with knight d2. Well, of course, knight d2. If only he plays something else, maybe knight f3 instead, then this knight goes to e4 and gains a temper. With knight d2, it doesn't happen. Well, most people here continue with c5, e3, for example, knight c6, c3, and after c takes d4, you capture with the e pawn, and then we play uh, Karl's bot uh, system with reversed colors, or if black doesn't take on c5 but continues with e6, then just uh, maybe knight gf3, or you play what Magnus played. So a very similar position appeared uh, with a different move order later in the game. For example, here black continued with e6. This is a solid move. However, the disadvantage of this move is that the bishop on c8 is not developed yet and black should somehow solve this issue by uh, probably doing a fianchetta. E3, bishop e7, c3. Now a strong pawn center is built. Black castles, bishop d3, and black continues with b6. Everything is uh, played naturally. We cannot say that this is a tactical position. And I'm sure that most chess players in this position would continue with knight gf3, bishop b7, castle, knight bd7, queen e2, black plays c5, and maybe rook c1 or rook d1, and uh, then uh, somehow one of the players will open the position in the center, uh, there will be a direct confrontation uh, between uh, minor pieces, some exchanges can be played, the position gets simplified, and uh, the most likely the game most likely ends in a draw or one of the players makes a critical mistake and uh, uh, the other one wins the game. However, that would be a slow game where uh, it is required from both players to play positionally according to their understanding of the position. So they should move pieces slowly, maneuver, improve them, uh, try to uh, locate um, pieces to better positions, something like that. But in this course, we are learning how to make a strategic position, a 
tactical position, or in other words, we can say a dynamic position. And Magnus here finds a perfect decision. What do you think? Which perfect decision I'm talking about? Please pause this video and suggest a move that in your opinion uh, makes uh, better chances, uh, creates better chances for white to play tactically later in the game, maybe after three, four or five moves. Well, this section is devoted to the attack on the enemy king, and that's why to initiate the attack, white uh, may play with f4. With the idea to get the control of the e5 square, when you initiate the kingside attack, uh, the e5 is the most critical square that you should have the control of. It's always better to place the knight there, and if your knight is exchanged, uh, then one of the pawns goes there. Usually it's the f pawn, but sometimes also the d pawn, depends on the concrete position. And even with the king being castled to the king side, a pawn march is still a good idea because black cannot take advantage of the white king's weakness. They just don't have enough material to bring from the center from the queen side to the king side while the position is completely closed. Bishop b7. Oh, this is actually what is also called as a stone wall. Okay, what did white do in this position? White realized that this knight is the defender of the king. It defends the h7, it also controls the e4. And for example, if such move like uh, knight f3 can be played, then black would react with uh, probably something like that. And that would stop the attack. That's why here Magnus Carlsen decides to exchange his bishop. He no longer needs this bishop because his pawns are located on dark squares, so this bishop can be restricted and the enemy bishop can be restricted as well. And only then they continue with knight g f3. And uh, now the e4 square cannot be occupied with any black pieces quickly. So, for example, it would take several moves for them to get the control over the e4 square c5 well a typical move with the idea to open the position in the center potentially well the most logical move here is to castle but it seems to be too slow moreover it's not clear from this position that uh, white needs their king on g1 maybe instead they'd better castle to the queen side or keep the king in the center that's why magnus decides to save a temper and continues with h4 H4 also contains a hidden threat, which I'm sure uh, um, Cuenca Jimenez was afraid of. That's why his next move was H6. He wanted to prevent this threat. Well, which threat I'm talking about? Let me explain. H4 is played in order to reinforce the position of the knight on G5. However, the knight on G5 doesn't do anything uh, itself. Uh, it should be a part of a combination which exposes the black king. For example, if knight e6, then uh, one may consider such move like bishop h7. Bishop h7, and this is what I think uh, Cuenca Jimenez was afraid of. He just uh, didn't want to play any developing move uh, with the knight because he thought that bishop h7 is already a threat. However, it wasn't. Of course, if the end black uh, doesn't play properly, for example, king takes h7, knight g5, and they continue with king g8, they are most likely to lose the game after queen h5. White threatens with a mate. If instead they take it, it's still a check, and after king goes back, it's queen h5. And white is still threatening with uh, even two mates. And after f6 or f5 is played, it's just g6, and the king cannot escape. If king g6 here, it's queen c2, and then this queen comes to uh, h7, which also leads to a checkmate. I'm not sure if... Uh, um, I should demonstrate it. For example, king h5, uh, you play queen to h7 in this position. They, for example, what? Uh, move the king to g4. 
And then the king is uh, quite vulnerable. You can uh, checkmate him in a few moves. So which few moves I, um, you should play? Well, not everything is clear, but you can just do this and then continue with that move. That makes sense. Another option is to, uh, well, of course, you can do this move, uh, then bring the king and deliver this check, but it's too slow. Well, I think knight of seven is good enough. Maybe just the most simple way here is knight f1, knight h2, something like that. Or maybe just, uh, well, maybe just this move. This move, for, for example, uh, rook goes to uh, h8. After knight f3, rook goes to h8, let's say. Then knight h2. He goes there. Ah, sorry, it's not a mate. It's not a mate. The queen has to retreat. Okay, no, that's not a good line, but I am sure that it's enough just to play this move and then continue with queen g6. Okay, however, it's not the point. With king h6, black here is able to secure their king's position and then it's unclear of how you can continue. But uh, I'm sure black decided that after knight g5, white is completely winning and king h6 doesn't save the game. That's why they continued with h6. And you know, when your opponent uh, played with his uh, one of his pawns from the king's pawn cover, it uh, it creates an opportunity for you to exchange this pawn. That's why Magnus immediately plays g4 in this position with the idea of playing g5, exchanging the h pawn, open at least one file on the king side and use his rook to attack. So it's always better to keep uh, the pawn uh, cover of the king on their initial positions f7, g7 and h7. Anyway, h6, g4, bishop e7, g5 of course. Well, look at how strong these pawn chains are. Uh, white uh, didn't castle but this is the only thing that they didn't do. The rest of their position is really perfect. And I also want you to notice that here, white has material majority on the king side. So these pieces can potentially join the attack and uh, black is defending with these. Bishop and two pawns only. Well, and uh, of course, here, black played h5. They just didn't want to exchange uh, pawns to be able to open up the position. However, even this move doesn't save black. What do you think white should continue? And I also want you to guess the next move of black. After you realize what would black play if it was their turn, then you will find the best move for white. Well, losing the temper means black can play g6. So, and uh, then the position, the pawn structure will be blocked and the position will uh, be closed for at least five, six moves more. Well, you can of course do this with the idea of attacking on h5 and if they react with this, then only a sacrifice allows you to open up the position. However, uh, three pawns to compensate the bishop that you sacrificed. Also, there is a mating threat and uh, these pawns will move forward. The h and the g pawns, of course. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Instead of knight e5, it's better to open up the position immediately. g6 was played by Magnus. He wants to destroy this pawn cover. Pawn takes, uh, bishop takes g6. So the king is weak, the h5 is hanging. Black tries to develop their pieces. They have no counterplay. They have uh, only to defend their position. Knight g5 threatening to take there as well as to take on h5 with the queen and checkmate uh, with uh, queen h7. So here black has to face with 
material losses. They play knight f6. And if you want, you can take on e6. And gain the exchange after that. However, Magnus played bishop h5. He decided to keep this knight on g5. Why? If the knight is captured, then the rook may uh, participate the attack through the h file. So bishop h5, it was queen d6, bishop comes back. This position is completely winning. However, white... Um, is still attacking the king by um, advancing their h pawn. So bishop c6, h6, bishop e8. Black is doing right things. They are trying to exchange the active pieces of white. However, it's not enough. The king is already exposed. Queen b1, just to protect the bishop. c takes d4, c takes d4. Well, typically in this position, e takes d4 is a better move, but this time the pawn is hanging. That's why, of course, c takes d4, and black cannot take advantage of the control over the c file, even if they uh, use their rook and then bring the queen there. Rook c8, h6. So what happens then? Well, if pawn takes, it's rook takes, or first you can do this move. Let's say they take it with something, or with the rook. Then queen comes to g6. And uh, the game, the game is over actually. King goes to h8 and the rook takes on h6. So that's why after h6, black realized that they should uh, chase the queen away and also liquidate this bishop. They played rook c1, sacrificing it. Queen takes c1, but bishop takes g6. However, it's not enough. And then because of the enemy king weakness, the position is full of tactics. Knight comes there, queen checks, king goes somewhere else to not fall under attack. And then, after this move was played, it's just knight e6. So in this position, there are two threats. King takes there and knight takes there. This is where, after knight e6, black decided to resign. So let's sum it up. What happened in this game? Please take a look at this critical moment of the game. Uh, before that, both players were playing strategically and were trying to develop their pieces. But after White uh, continued with e f4, they could open, uh, they, they could uh, continue a pawn march and expose the enemy king. Another clever decision was to liquidate this knight on f6 in order to not let it come to e4. So if you want to create, if you want to change the type of the position from strategic to tactical, I would kindly recommend you to initiate a kingside attack, especially if the center is stable or closed and you have the material majority on the king side. You can even keep your king in the center and advance your pawns immediately if you see that your opponent cannot take advantage of your king's position. Okay. Thank you for your attention. This is only one example and we continue with the next one in the next video.